Good afternoon, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Thursday, the 22nd of September, 2016. Taking a look at what we have out there this afternoon, here is Carl, starting to get a little bit better organized. Maybe it can get rid of that zero there and become a tropical storm symbol again later today. Uh, speaking of tropical storms, there's Lisa. This will continue to move off towards the north, maybe impacting the Azores at some point as a remnant circulation water temperatures up here a little too cold to support anything significant a satellite animation of our systems this afternoon there's Bermuda now under a tropical storm watch looks like Carl is trying trying what word is that trying to finally I guess it's trying and finally fused together tryingly it is trying to finally get itself better organized around the low pressure center and you can see that this outflow right here, this to me is a big clue that this will probably develop from here on out because you're getting this curled sort of clockwise flow to the clouds, meaning that this is where the air is doing what it's supposed to do for a system to develop. And it's not blowing across. And yeah, I mean, you see, look at Julia. This is a classic example of shear where the upper level winds are blowing across the system, whereas with Carl here, Finally, we're starting to see the winds fan out in that clockwise fashion, and underneath that, it'll start to curl up and consolidate that energy, that vorticity that we talk about, and it should become a hurricane as it turns and heads away from Bermuda. Still, though, like I mentioned, tropical storm watch, so it's possible for some squally weather, maybe tropical storm conditions a little windy in some of those bands on the northwest side of coral circulation and some higher waves and speaking of waves I'm still hopeful if this will become a hurricane a far enough away from Bermuda so they don't get any adverse effects always a good thing uh, and B if it'll do so in this area uh, then maybe we can get some of those swells to come back out towards the east coast here and some of these north facing beaches of the greater Antilles to give the surf community something to do uh, and that would be nice so we'll keep an eye on that over the next couple of days it'll take a couple of days further for those waves if they do get generated to reach land so we'll watch that closely next our attention is going to turn more and more to this area of energy right here and um, I mentioned this the other day uh, these systems get tracked as pouches of energy and that's kind of before the whole invest 90L or whatever you call it, you know, get started. And these are tracked even before that. And uh, this has been over Africa as an area of interest as it moved through Nigeria and Ghana. And now it's come off the coast near Sierra Leone. And it looks like it's getting into the water here off the west coast of Africa. Got a little bit of, you know, you can see that outflow coming out from it. Um, it's not being sheared already. It's in a favorable low latitude environment and more importantly we're finally starting to see the vorticity signature show up a little bit more if you remember yesterday it was just barely there it was kind of this green color it's still elongated but it's there it's starting to increase the spin in the atmosphere and this may be the beginning of what we have been watching especially in the GFS the global forecast system model over the last few days advertising that a low latitude system would in fact develop and move its way westward added to that this is last night's UK Met operational run here uh, the 0z version see right there 0z and here it is picking up on the system there it is there hard to see towards the windward islands here by about uh, one week out 168 hours out in time so other global models picking up on this system, maybe some more energy behind it as well, but we're going to worry about this system here, the front runner. Uh, again, this satellite shot of it right here. This is what we're going to be watching closely over the next few days. So let's take a look at the evolution of this afternoon's GFS run based on the morning observations. It's actually the zero, I'm sorry, the 12Z run. So it's valid from 8 o'clock this morning, Eastern Time. That's, you know, synoptically when all the weather balloons and the upper air soundings are taken and assimilated into the model. Uh, not only the GFS, but the UK Met, the Euro, 
all the global models, the best two times to really look at them would be the 12Z and the 0Z runs because that's when the upper air data is, is uh, ingested and you get the best run overall. So that being said, this is valid tomorrow morning, so 12 UTC on Friday the 23rd. And there's the energy here off the coast of Africa, not very impressive. By the way, there's Carl looking nice and round. And there's Lisa still nice and round as well. This is the vorticity signature. And I like to use this, again, it, this is my own personal preference. Okay, and it shows me the health of the systems. And if they look decent and healthy at the 850 millibar level, which is just above the surface, that's about 5,000 feet up, if they look solid here, then you have a base to work with from there. So if they look like garbage here, then they're not going to be, uh, why even look higher in the atmosphere is the way I approach it. And so as you'll see, we're going to be watching to see what happens with this energy. Does it start to come together out here in the deep tropics, the main development region? And well, let's go and look together, shall we? All right, so here's 48 hours. And again, you see Carl there moving. It's hard to see Bermuda's just up in here. And this will move around and south and east of Bermuda. And there's Lisa kind of butting up against this ridge. Hard to understand why it's moving north into the ridge, but, you know, stranger things have happened, right? And then here's the energy down here. Now look how these uh, wind flags here, these wind barbs, kind of curl around and you get this sort of cyclonic curl. That's your tropical wave energy. And the wind shift, you know, southwesterly winds here, northeasterly winds here. And so you have low pressure trying to develop. And this is only 48 hours out, so here it is, the model picking it up already. Finally, at 72 hours, there's Carl caught up in the westerlies, probably a hurricane by now, passing well away from Bermuda. This will get whisked off into the mid-latitudes and beyond. And there's Lisa kind of coming around the backside of that high. And these two will just make it all the way up here into the North Atlantic, maybe bringing some energy and inclement weather over to Europe. Northwest Europe next week, so we'll have to watch that. So here is the other system, that, uh, what we call Pouch 39L. I know that sounds very strange. Uh, eventually, if this is going to develop, it'll get mentioned by the National Hurricane Center. I suspect maybe by tomorrow, I don't think it'll be mentioned today, but maybe by tomorrow if the models are still um, consistent with their development of this feature, it would be within the five-day range because here we are looking out at 72 hours and it's trying to consolidate a little bit more of that energy there. And so their five-day outlook, the National Hurricane Center five-day outlook, might pick this up tomorrow. So we'll have to wait and see. Moving on out into time, Carl and Lisa. There's Carl, the energy from it. There's Lisa. So we won't even talk about these anymore. There's our system now that's currently sitting over here at 96 hours starting to show up a little bit better in the vorticity field at 120 hours. At this point, five days out, this is next Tuesday, September 27th, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, or 12 UTC. And there it is. It looks fairly decent in the 850 millibar field. And it's approaching the southern Windward Islands here. Or we'll just call it the Windward Islands as a whole. Uh, the Leeward Islands, I don't know the exact geographic breakpoint. But it looks like it would be heading westward towards the Windward Islands. And so you guys down there need to take note of this. Finally, by day six, much uh, stronger, tighter vorticity in here. I'm going to zoom in in a moment and show you a higher resolution map. And there it is approaching near Barbados. And if we zoom in and look at it here, in fact, I'll zoom in even more. Here we are at day six, for what it's worth, uh, sitting down here just to the east of the Windward Islands. Barbados is hard to pick it out, but it's tucked in there, I think about right there. So a pretty close approach to Barbados on this run. Fairly decent signature in the GFS model field. And moving generally to the west, maybe a little bit north of west. Trinidad and Tobago down here. And in fact, let's just look at a map of the Caribbean I prepared real quick to get everybody caught up. Uh, it's been a while since this area was impacted by a hurricane, and I'm not saying this will become a hurricane before reaching this region, but if it were, even if it was a tropical storm, let me remind you 
last year up here in Dominica. Erica passed through as a tropical storm, and unfortunately there was loss of life due to the tremendous rainfall from the system. And uh, one of our YouTube viewers here in Jamaica, Andre, he knows all about the heavy rainfall from just passing systems, 92L dumping a lot of rain and flash flooding issues there. So I'm not just worried about, oh, is a hurricane going to be passing through the Windward Islands here? It's, you know, the incipient tropical wave itself may be trying to develop as it comes through this region. And you can get very heavy rainfall, gusty winds, all kinds of hazards. So let's don't focus on will this be a hurricane or a tropical storm. Let's look at first, is there going to be energy coming through this region that could bring the heavy rainfall first and foremost? And from there, uh, we can figure out and see if something stronger is going to occur. And certainly the GFS 12Z run suggests that maybe we need to watch this pretty close. You know, this is six days out. If you look at the model runs, you can see what happens with these systems. Every, you know, other run it takes it further west into the Gulf. Sometimes it curves it out to sea. You know, once you get beyond five to seven days, it's really, really just shooting darts at a dartboard at that point, and there's no reason to speculate because the upper air pattern, the steering currents, everything else, pretty chaotic out at that time frame. But the bottom line, this feature right here, really going to start watching it uh, closely now that it's over the water and that energy will be moving steadily west at a fairly low latitude and it very well might be our next name storm out there but you know, there's other features to watch a front dropping into the Gulf of Mexico may or may not create a low pressure area in that region I didn't really touch upon it because there wasn't much model support that I saw on the 12Z analysis I'll talk about it more tomorrow if it's uh, something that shows up again. So you never know. We may have some action in the Western Gulf, and then, of course, we'll be watching the feature uh, coming off of Africa now. It'll be interesting to see when and if it gets picked up by the National Hurricane Center. I mean, certainly they notice it, but when does it get mentioned in the outlook? Well, stay tuned, and we'll find out together. All right, that's it for me for today. Have a great rest of your Thursday afternoon. And as always, I really appreciate your time and attention, the wonderful feedback that I'm getting on social media, Twitter, and on the YouTube comments. If ever you want me to cover a particular topic, a question that you have, do not be afraid to ask. So far, we haven't had any trolls coming in causing trouble. I haven't had to boot or block anybody, so that's good. There are no dumb questions. You just need to ask the questions, and if I'm capable, I'll find the answer for you and talk about it on a future update, all right? That's always fun to do. Again, I'm Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.